The title Girl 27 comes from a manufactured call sheet. These 120 girls, these underage dancers, were summoned to MGM and they were put in thick camera makeup and skimpy cowgirl outfits and they were told they were working on a movie. These lovely girls, and you had the finest of them, greet you and that's to show you how we feel about you and the kind of a good time at the head of you starting tonight. They were called to a studio. They were told they were working in a musical number. And these girls were bused to a rem remote location. They sat and waited. There were no phones. There was no transportation. And the night got darker. And these 282 salesmen arrived. And there were 500 cases of scotch and champagne for 282 men. And on the fake call sheet of the 120 girls, Patricia Douglas's girl 27. First of all, I was stunned. I have read a lot about legal cases over the years. I had never heard of her, and I was actually quite scandalized that number one, this had happened to her, and number two, is that why wasn't anybody talking about it? The whole vocabulary of bad woman, slut, tart, tramp, everything came up immediately if, if anybody mentioned she was raped. If they had any idea of the ramifications and the ripple effect that that had on her. It changed her life, my grandmother's life, mine. I have no idea where her life would have gone had it not been for that night. There is almost no way to accurately convey the degree of MGM's power in those days because it doesn't exist anymore and it's hard to imagine. If you got a job at MGM and you worked there for life, you were taken care of. I can think of no reason, none, zero, even though I'm a criminal defense attorney, no reason at all to publish her name, her picture, her address, and refer to MGM Studio, who is financing this five-day extravaganza, this drunken brawl for its salespeople, refer to them as a local studio. If that doesn't tell you right from the get-go the sort of community sentiment about these cases back in the late 30s, I don't know what does. Seventy years later, I found a couple of other dancers who were at that party and I asked them if they would talk to me and they said, I don't think I can because Mr. Mayor wouldn't approve. Now I said, Mr. Mayor's been dead for 40 years, but they were so, it was so ingrained that you did what you were told to do. They controlled everybody. They controlled the media, they controlled the police, they controlled the district attorney, they controlled the doctor that Patricia Douglas was taken to after she was raped. His whole business depended on MGM. So he got to court and he said, well, I can't say that she was raped, but I can't say she wasn't raped. You don't believe in taking no for an answer, do you? Don't look at me like that, Mr. Powell. You scare me. The journey of finding about the event and starting to research it, and then getting to a juncture where you realized, my God, this woman is still alive. That was an enormous motivator. But then f actually finding her and calling her up on the phone and having her hang up on you over and over and over again for months, um, it became a long, long drawn out process because she didn't trust. Girl 27 really allowed her a chance for the first time to tell her own story, but also to, to communicate that story to a widespread audience and, and treat her as she should have been treated, which is as a hero. This is not just a movie about a Hollywood scandal. It's, the mo it's a movie about the legacy of rape and the, and the effects of rape and how one event can, at a, at a very formative age, can traumatize you. The only thing I can remember is this David Ross's face. Of course, this is, I was in my nightmare for many years. I could not get him off my mind and what he had done to me. He took my innocence. You can never get that back. That you were a virgin. I don't like to bring it up. But it's important for the story because you were talking about he took your innocence. He took it on every level. You were a virgin. Yep. I don't want to talk anymore. I wanted to give her back the truth. Something real happened to her, something real and terrible happened to her in 1937, and everyone said it didn't happen. And they made sure that we didn't know it had happened. I was the first person in her life to go to her and say, I know what your reality is. It really happened. You deserve to be vindicated. And as crazy as it might sound, in, in 65 years, no one had ever said any of that to her.